Hello, I'm Stan Russell. I'm an architect in Charlotte, North Carolina. My practice name is W. Stanley Russell Architect. I've um, been practicing for 35 years. Um, I do primarily residential work. Um, I do consider myself a, a, a modernist architect and modernist in the terms of um, a 21st century architect, trying to always look forward. Um, I feel very fortunate to, to be able to, uh, to do what I do and to practice architecture. I grew up in Ware Shoals, South Carolina, a small cotton mill town in South Carolina's upstate, about 35 miles from Greenville. I went to a, a small school. The town had about 3,000 people. And uh, I graduated at, in a class that was the last class I think, to uh, go through the school in one building. So it was, it was small. We had no art programs. We had uh, very little extracurricular things going on other than sports and just the typical classwork. I feel very fortunate that the, the teachers were good. The expectations for getting an education were high and for my family as well. When time came in high school to choose electives in senior year, I chose to take a mechanical drawing class. That was the only thing that was even closely related to architecture. And growing up, I didn't know what an architect did anyway or what architecture was. I liked building things when I was growing up, tree houses, things like that, but never had any plans of taking that to a, a career level. So this mechanical drawing class that I took was taught by the band director. And his qualification for teaching the mechanical drawing class was that he had taken mechanical drawing when he was in high school. So that was kind of the extent of, of uh, art and mechanical drawing in my high school. It turned out to be such a serendipitous thing that it worked out very well that, that he was one of the best teachers I ever had and a teacher that encouraged me to, uh, to go into architecture. I really enjoyed the class. I found that I liked to draw. I found that I liked to, to create. And so I applied to uh, Clemson's architecture program. I got to Clemson and, and was fortunate there as well to find a very good professor in Dean Vollendorf. Uh, that was his name, not his position, who uh, inspired me and opened a window to uh, modern architecture, to organic architecture, and really made architecture come alive. Uh, I tell folks that uh, that was a time in my life when you know, I was very young and, and experiencing all these things for the first time, having just grown up in a small town and, and not traveled much and seen many things. To have a, a new window on the world open to me of all these exciting things out there, learning about Frank Lloyd Wright and all the people he inspired. So that was just a wonderful experience and, and I feel like that it was then that I drank the Kool-Aid. And, and that made me into um, kind of the architect I am today. That it made me passionate about architecture. It, it made me want to, to continue to learn, to have this contagious enthusiasm for architecture. And I think that's I've been a, a big part of my life. Another factor of my architectural education came about during my work experience while I was in school. I had to work to, to go to school. The first year, I went to Clemson, I applied for a job in my hometown with a builder. It was a very small builder and he would let me work over vacations. Uh, if I was home on a weekend, he would let me work on a Saturday so I could make some money but also learn more about construction. And that turned out to be one of the best experiences in my life. I worked for him every summer while going to school on holidays, as I mentioned weekends. And even though we were doing small houses and remodeling, nothing, uh, nothing special at all, I, I learned so much about the process of construction, about how things go together, about the different trades, materials, and the ethic of hard work. Primarily through Professor Bellendorf's encouragement, I started traveling where I could around the country on a budget. I uh, went to Chicago in second year spring break to see all of Frank Lloyd Wright's work. That's the first time I'd ever been out of the South. And that was just a wonderful experience to see all those houses, and not just houses, but to, to see the city of Chicago and all the, the buildings there, the wonderful architecture, and, and kind of where the 
modern movement in the United States at least started with Sullivan and Wright and a whole lot of architects that they influenced. The trips and the travel really meant a lot. It opened a, a, another window for me to, to see, to actually experience architecture. And I think that's the, the real key for a, for a student, for a layman, for an architect, is to experience it. We can't just look at something on a screen or in a book and really know what it's like. Architecture is truly a three-dimensional art. And so you have to, to walk through it, you have to see it in, in its context. And that was just wonderful for me as, as a young, impressionable student to, to see the works of Wright. Later to, to go out west and to see the works of Faye Jones and, and Bruce Goff and all these wonderful architects who I came to admire. My professor also introduced me to the work of lots of other architects who were fairly unknown at the time. And it was really wonderful to, to see their work. A lot of the West Coast modernists who weren't that popular in the, in the 70s when I was in school, like uh, Schindler and, and Neutra, Mark Mills, lots of architects doing wonderful things. And so it was wonderful to, to see their work and, and to look at how they practiced. And I started to think, well, maybe that's something I can do. And so that became my goal when I was in school, is to, to get out of school, to, to become registered, and to have my own practice and do residential work. That's kind of how it all started. After leaving Clemson, I worked for one additional year at, at doing construction work. There wasn't work, much work going on at the time. I did construction work, and then I uh, looked at what I could do next. There was a big building boom going on in Houston at the time. And so I picked up and, and moved there and worked for a small firm, McKee and Camrath. They were the most organic firm in, in Houston. Uh, Mr. Camrath had known Frank Lloyd Wright and they had done some, some very wonderful work in the 50s and 60s. We're still go doing good work when, when I got there. They were an older firm by then and, and very small. But it was a wonderful place to work and to have my first job in an office. I learned a lot by just staying during lunch. I would stay in the office and go through the, the vault and look at all the old drawings and pull those out and look at the wonderful houses they had done and the details and how they put things together. And then on the weekends I would drive around and, and see these projects and experience them. And that was part of my education as well. So that was a wonderful experience. I left. Houston to go back to school to get my fifth year degree and that's what brought me to Charlotte. My, my mentor professor Bollendorf had moved to Charlotte to UNCC and was teaching there so I applied to Charlotte to get my fifth year and, and did that. And that opened up another window for me which was I think very influential in making me who I am today as well. Upon graduating UNCC with my fifth year I then worked uh, two more years to fulfill my requirements for my licensing requirements so I could take my architectural exam. Did that and decided to start my own practice about six months after I got my license. It, and that was in, uh, in 1982. The same year I started my practice, I was hired by UNCC as an adjunct to work with the Visiting Critics Program. This was a wonderful program that UNCC had in the 80s where they brought well-known architects who were doing interesting work to the university to work with studios. And the, the architect would come four or five times a semester. And when I was working with the program as an adjunct, I would teach the studio for the times they worked there. So I got to meet some, some wonderful architects, got to learn a a lot and I'm sure I learned more than the, than the students did. But it was just such a good experience to, to be able to see these architects who I admired and, and the mode of working with students and, and to, to see how they tried to teach the principles that they had grown up with and that, that they had developed over a lifetime of practice you know, to these, to these young students. One of the uh, architects who I uh, got to work with, who was uh, already a hero of mine, was John Walker. And it was just, uh, just a wonderful experience. I had already admired his work when, when I was a student at Clemson. Walker was a, a student of Frank Lloyd Wright uh, in the 30s, came through the Taliesin Fellowship, and was more successful, I think, than some of the folks who came through that program in that he absorbed 
all the really important principles that Frank Lloyd Wright taught. But when he went out on his own, he didn't create work that looked like just that, that he was another little Frank Lloyd Wright, that he, he did his own work in his own way. It was very unique, and he's known for that today. And, and so that was a wonderful experience. There were quite a few others that came through that program at the time that was just wonderful for students to be able to, to experience. And I, and I feel really fortunate to have, to have been there at that time. So that was, a, I think, a, a, a good thing that created a symbiotic relationship with my practice that here I was involved with, still involved with young students and, and, and these architects coming in who, who were masters at what they were doing. And I was starting to practice, you know, doing the small additions and, and, and small houses and things like that. And it was just a, it was a very good energetic time and I think it was a good way for me to get started in my practice. My approach to architecture has been characterized by what I'd call opportunism and optimism. And it, that's opportunism in, in a positive way, as opposed to idealism and perfectionism. It, it seems that idealism and perfectionism can lead you down a path of no return, actually, where it's really difficult to get anything done to meet a, a certain standard. Modernism, to me, more of a, a state of mind and, and not a style, certainly um, a, a way to, to look at a problem. That's how I, I became interested in, in architecture through, through Wright and through his lineage. And for Wright, it was organic. He called it organic. And, and I think a lot of people have a misconception about what organic means. I think some folks think that it's something biomorphic that, look, that looks natural. But for Wright, it was always that the solution for the problem lay in the problem itself. And that the solution would, would grow out of the circumstances of the problem, the, the, the client's program, the site conditions, all the different things that, that uh, make up a, a project. And, and that was organic architecture. It kind of grew from a seed, and he I think got that a lot of that from Lewis Sullivan. And so that's the way I look at modernism, is that modernism came about in a time uh, post-war. It was a reflection of the real spirit of the times. There was a lot of optimism in the United States. There was a lot of a lot of positive feelings. There were a lot of new developments that had taken place uh, during World War II in terms of materials and, and structure and things like this. And architects were, were looking for different ways to do things, to break with the past, to, to do something that embodied this optimism of our culture. And that's what I've always tried to, to bring forward, this always looking ahead, not looking back. And I think that that you do have to look at a, in a positive way at the spirit of the times is what architecture can do. So that's what I try to bring to, to my architecture and that's what I encourage folks to look for someone to partner with who is positive, who wants to, to work with them as a partner, who wants to work in a collaborative effort and, and to really work together to, to try to achieve something that's uniquely theirs, that, that's not like something that was built before that's not like you know something from the 50s but that truly 21st century and belongs in the in, in the Carolinas if that's if that's where you're practicing which is where I am so that's what I <coughs> try to encourage folks to do for students and and other folks interested in in architecture I encourage them to for students particularly I encourage them to, to do construction work as I mentioned earlier, that I think that was one of the, the uh, uh, best things I could have done is to, to work on a job site, to work as a carpenter. I learned so much doing that, and I think uh, it would serve most students well to go out and get their hands dirty and, and, and learn how things go together. If they don't have the opportunity to, to work on a job site, I encourage them just to visit job sites. To, uh, of, of any type and any size to, to see how things go together, to see what the process is. It's, it's very informative and can, can really tell you a lot. The other thing I encourage students to do is travel. I think, again, that's so important to, to see what's out there. There's so much 
work, and especially in the United States. And a lot of it's disappearing, unfortunately. And fortunately, North Carolina Modernist is is doing a great job to, to try to keep that from happening. But, um, you know, we're losing a, a lot of the legacy architecture that we have. And so I think it's, um, you don't have to go far. And that's another great thing about North Carolina Modernist is that there's such a great database now to find out if you do go somewhere, what's worth seeing when I go there. I've taken so many vacations and I've, I've, I'm so fortunate to have an understanding wife who encourages that and enjoys it as well. And so we, we plan lots of vacations around architecture and even if they're not planned around architecture, if we go somewhere, I'll always find some buildings that we should visit and, and, and we do. And, and that's been very educational as well. So it's, it's something that I would really encourage students to do as well. And then finally I would encourage students just to, to draw, just to, to always have a sketchbook with them, to continue to draw, be very diligent. I, I heard someone years ago give a lecture on art education and I can't remember the lady's name but she said something that has stuck with me over the years. She said she thought that two most important things in art education, and, and I would say this applies to architecture as well, are rigor and imagination. And I think that's so true. I think that rigor just comes about from hard work and the imagination is self-explanatory. But I've never had a project where I just woke up one day and, and came up with the idea and, and it was full blown, um, a full blown mature idea and there it was and I, it didn't require work. And I think every, every good project just requires just working it through, working and working and working, working on the details, working it out, working to make sure that it's buildable, that it's efficient, that, that it works for your client. And I think that's how good architecture occurs. It's, 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 not, it's not, not easy, it does require work, but it is fun and it is rewarding. And I can't think of anything I'd rather do other than architecture.